and our old friend from Sunday House Call, the health program that we used to have here until something like called the election. Kind of got in the way. David, great to see you. Good to see you, Eric. So now, what's, us men, like, you know, you take your health for granted. Sometimes you don't always go to the doctor when you should. Uh, let's start with what are the main issues? Heart. But you say there's, there's good news when it deals with cardiovascular health. Well, this is, a, Eric, a very important topic because men's health, we're, of course, we're talking about it during the month, but we want to make sure the next 11 months men are aware of this. Did you know that, for example, men live five years shorter than women? But five years is a long time. Why is that? Because women actually go to the doctors, they do screening, they go for their mammogram and pap smears, but men, we're the type of people that if it's not broken, why fix yeah. it? Why should I go to doctors? And we don't ask for direct. That's absolutely right. So you talk about heart disease, that's the number one killer for men and women. And it's so important to make sure that you know about your high blood pressure. What is your cholesterol level? Do you know about the good cholesterol, bad cholesterol? So one of the things that we've been saying on the show is make sure at the age of 25 you know what your cholesterol is. Because if it's high, we can prevent it, not necessarily by medication, by exercise, adding fruits and vegetables, portion control. And you know, we're so good at putting cardiac stents and angiograms and doing bypass, but that's the, the other side of the disease. And what we want people to know is catch it early on. When you prevent it, they can catch up with women and live longer. Wow, how, how important is uh, you know, your father's history? Let's say you, your dad had heart problems. Is that family history? Absolutely, important? extremely important because part of our history and physical, one of the big questions is what is your family history of heart disease? Do you have any diabetes? Do you have any cancer in the family? And a lot of these genetic diseases, we pay more attention and more aggressive with screening. And that's the key word, Eric. You want to go for information, for data, for screening, and be in the hands of expert doctors to make sure that, you know, really take care of you over the years. You know, what has happened also, the good news about heart disease is that now people live longer and longer. Now we see people coming in their 80s and 90s. Yeah. So what happens? Heart disease is getting better, and now the cancer is on the rise, because if you live long enough, you're going to have a lot of men's health issues like prostate and other things. Well, you just mentioned prostate. Prostate cancer, you're an expert and specialist on, on, on the prostate. So I sat here for, what, six, five, six years with that's you? That's right. Talking about the prostate. Uh, what do we look out for? You've got to get that PSA Well, every year. that's right. PSA stands for prostate-specific antigen. I've been a huge advocate for this, and I really think you should get a baseline PSA at the age of 40. We see a lot of young men that are coming up with aggressive prostate cancers and look not every elevated PSA means biopsy and not every positive biopsy means surgery there's an art of medicine and that's what we deal with now today with all the MRIs and genetic tests that we have we really can find early disease and do something and about it. The other thing I've learned about this is we did the last August, we did my numbers That's right. on, on the show on House Call, and you have to keep your numbers and see if they go up. I had a two out of three, and then a few months ago I went. I you know, delayed the blood test, and I had a 6.85. Then a few days later it was like a, almost an eight, and I thought there was a, the velocity. I'm like, what did I learn from David Samadhi? Uh-oh. Thankfully, it, it was nothing. Could that be inflammation? What is that? Well, I'm what, so what glad. What should people look out for? This is the first time that you're admitting, and I'm so happy that you actually went and you got it tested. Yeah. Yes, you're right. Elevated PSA could be an enlarged prostate. Mm -hmm. It could be an inflammation. But the ones that obviously is very dangerous is prostate cancer. And one of the things that we've done, especially for the month of June, is anybody who is diagnosed with prostate cancer, and they really don't know what to do. There are so many options. They can go to prostatecancer911.com come and we will give them free consultation, help them out, and as a result of this Fox News Sunday house call that we had and shows like this, we're able to help thousands of people all people over the don't country. Know when you're faced with that, and I'm thinking, oh, I gotta call Dr. Samadhi, uh, see what happens. You don't know if it's robotic, you don't know if it's cyber knife, right. you don't know where you, uh, So there are a lot of options, and one shoes fit all is not the answer. You gotta really look at the entire patient, look at their type of cancer, the volume of the cancer they have, what type of PSA they have, examine them and find out if they have a nodule or not. Now, like I said, we're getting an MRI. So there's tons of information on this site, prostatecancer911.com, and they can send their information and we help them out. And now what I learned about this is get a blood test, and when you get a blood test, make sure that you get your PSA, because I had a blood test that didn't have the PSA. And also, so get the PSA blood test. No look, sexual look. activity 24 hours to 48 hours before getting your PSA. Oh, oh, I bet oh. you that you didn't know that, um, because that no can also... No comment. Well, anyway, because that can bump the PSA as well. That's okay. a good information. All right, I'm learning stuff every day here on the Fox News Channel. Uh, diabetes is the final point. Uh, it's so important, and that's so. Is it 
potentially preventable? It, absolutely. Eric, I'm concerned about diabetes because we talk about health care reform, we talk about new health care, uh, Republican policy, etc. Nobody can fix this problem unless you get diabetes, high blood pressure, and heart disease and cancer under control. Diabetes is actually a man-made disease. We are responsible. Obesity is one of the main reasons why we have diabetes. Not just sugar? This is not, well, sugar is part of it. But type 1 diabetes is genetic. We're talking about type 2 diabetes, which is the way we, our lifestyle, our food, our obesity, and the belly fat, all the things that we've spoken about. So you can actually help yourself by just really paying attention to what you're eating, how much you're eating, add exercise to your regimen, and really go out there. We can defeat this together. But you have to be determined, first go see the doctor, find out what your numbers are, what is your hemoglobin A1C, and that's how they know what you really have been doing, and fix it. Oh, I know from our, our experience for years, uh, among the other things, Mediterranean diet, exercise, watch what you eat. Well, right? I, I'm glad that at least in your case, <laughs> it's been extremely helpful, and uh, hopefully one day we'll have this on the yeah, house. It has, it has. David, always so good to see you. So good to see you. Thank you very much.